Alright everyone, a lot of you have heard about the Turks and Caicos dust-up. You've got a number of Americans that are being held there right now pending sentencing, which I believe is literally this afternoon, if I remember correctly, um, because they had stray ammunition in their luggage. Now the Turks and Caicos, a British territory, uh, is extremely anti-gun. They changed their laws a few months ago, actually, I believe it was February, so that originally, if you, like, you're an American tourist, and apparently that's like 75%, 80% of their tourist volume, so we'll, we'll get into the nitty-gritty of how we can really screw this particular minor possession uh, very, very easily, and it looks like they're moving to do so. Uh, normally, you, you got like a fine, or they said, okay, you can't return to our islands for the next five years or something. It may be community service. You have to pick up trash on the strand for a couple of days, and then we're booting your ass off the island survivor style, um, it, which is sensible. It's like, okay, you did break the law, but you didn't have a gun. You clearly didn't have intent. The, the, the ammunition in all of these cases was found when they were literally trying to transit off of the islands there. Clearly there was no malintent. It was clearly a mistake. Any reasonable, rational person would construe it that way. And so, you know, we're going to make you pay money, basically. Well, if you have the money to come to the Turks and Caicos, I'm sure this $1,000 fine, you won't have a problem with it. That's perfectly fine. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. But they changed their sentencing guidelines again earlier this year, where they have now a mandatory minimum sentencing uh, guideline of like 10 years. So you brought 122 around to the Turks and Caicos. Again, no firearm. You can't use it for any meaningful purpose. You didn't use it for any meaningful purpose. You were literally attempting to leave their territory at the time you were found out, having done no nothing legitimately wrong, but they think that it's a big problem. Um, th there's no malevolence. There's obviously no intent of a crime being committed or anything like that. And you might spend 10 years in a prison in a hot and humid tropical location. And you will unfortunately not be able to wander around on the beach when you're imprisoned there. I mean... No, under those circumstances, uh, the imprisonment in the Turks and Caicos would probably be pretty good. Oh my god, I get to sip pina coladas all day, and then at night I have to go back to the cell? Yeah, okay, you could do worse. <laughs> you could be imprisoned in Russia, of course, or Ukraine at this point. Just ask Gonzalo Lira. Um, the federal government normally in con uh, situations like this, uh, weighs in at the highest level. So the Secretary of State or even the President, uh, like you had Brittany Grinner, like over in Russia, and uh, Biden came out and made a bunch of speeches and stuff. All you know, uh, all she did was have some, you know, cannabis products, some vape products, and it's not really a big deal. And so we're going to trade this international arms dealer that has arguably overthrown several governments, by the way, in the process, and funded terrorists and everything else. We're going to trade him for the basketball star because she checks the right DEI boxes. And she came back and she had a little bit of a change of heart. She's like, oh, shit, uh, I didn't like the flag before. Now I'm kind of thankful to see it again. I'm glad that you learned from your experience, Brittany. Uh, but uh, <laughs> normally you get some sort of diplomatic pushing. It's like, okay, these tourists, they're our citizens. They didn't really do anything wrong. Can you just release them? It doesn't need to be a diplomatic incident, you know, considering that your economy is completely reliant on our country and travel. Now, a couple of weeks ago, several governors got together to write a letter uh, on behalf of the citizens of their states that are detained in the Turks and Caicos. I believe it was uh, Yunkin in Virginia, Oklahoma, and uh, I think the third was Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly. And they penned a letter basically saying, can you stop it? Uh, just, just return them to us if you need to find them or something. But please don't, <laughs> please do not sentence a citizen of my state who's got, you know, five kids or some shit like that to 10 years in a penal colony because that's just completely unnecessary and, and doesn't fit the so-called crime and makes absolutely no sense. Congress now, though, is getting involved. Oddly enough, attempting to do the job that Biden is unwilling to do because, uh, I mean, he's anti-gun, so the fact that these are technically weapons charges means he doesn't want to wade into that situation. It would, it would piss off certain liberals who think that uh, you shouldn't be uh, able to own a BB gun, so to speak. So he can't, he's not willing to do anything. Now Congress is saying, oh, well, we have, we have ways. We're simply going to force a no-travel advisory for the Turks and Caicos, so there will be no direct flights to the Turks and Caicos. You'll have to circumvent and go through Mexico or Costa Rica or something like that. And uh, we're also going to uh, 
take other measures like uh, hmm, an embargo, <laughs> an embargo on the Turks and Caicos, or something to that effect. Uh, a no travel advisory in coordination with a separate uh, uh, bill to try to prevent travelers insurance from being issued to people that intend to go there as their destination would effectively kill the economy. The economy is majority tourism and the majority of that tourism is United States citizens. If only half of them weren't going there, uh, I I'm sure that the small business owners in those islands would be very happy. The fishermen who give people tours, the scuba diving instructors, the hotel owners, the, the restaurant owners, They'll probably overthrow the island's government if they think that this is actually going to be a thing. And this is the way to do it. Now, if I were commander-in-chief, I would immediately weigh in, and I'd say, fuck you. And I'd say, maybe we'll park a couple of frigates off of these islands and prevent any uh, sea travel from going to and from. Maybe we'll just, uh, we won't just embargo you. We'll run a blockade on your islands until we get our citizens back. That's the real way to do it. Failing that, though, the economic side, it's sort of carrot-and-stick diplomacy, but it shouldn't... Congress and these governors shouldn't have to weigh in on the issue. The federal government should have already issued a strong statement condemning this action and saying, bring our citizens home. It makes me sad thinking that, uh, you know, if I'm abroad in the Netherlands or anywhere else, and I'm imprisoned on bullshit charges that wouldn't apply in the United States and quite clearly... They, they make absolutely no sense under our own legal system. It, it, I shouldn't have to rely on Phil Scott to write a letter. I shouldn't, certainly I don't want to rely on Congress. Hell, I'd rather rely on Phil Scott at that point. Um, the, the, no, the, the, the Secretary of State or some diplomat to that country or to the country that controls the territory, in the case of the Turks and Caicos, the UK, should be weighing in. Very publicly, by the way. We have the ability to strong arm these smaller possessions and territories in the world through their governments. We have that ability because of the massively lopsided economic advantage that we have. Should we not be using that to ensure that our citizens can go and travel as they wish and not be harassed and abused? I think so. That's actually a proper usage of government authority. Diplomacy, that's the forte of the executive branch, but the executive branch is nowhere to be found. No, it's governors. And random members of Congress, they're the ones that have to pick up the slack for an administration that doesn't know what it's doing. So. The hope is, uh, again, I believe the sentencing is today, my hope is that they find them and then they release them. And that no other American is stupid enough to go to the Turks and Caicos. We should be boycotting their little islands. And uh, if you want to go, so go to Bermuda, go to the Bahamas or the Florida Keys or something like that. You know, the U.S. does have a number of tropical possessions. Puerto Rico, Hawaii, all of these, Guam, all of these, Samoa, all of these wonderful possessions that we have that are so lovely. I'd love to visit them all. I definitely want to see Samoa sometime. It looks pretty cool. And Puerto Rico is definitely on my bucket list. I'm going to go to your fucking possession. Yeah, I, I left uh, one nine milli in the bag accidentally. And so now I've spent 10 years in prison despite the fact that I was jailed while I was attempting to leave your country. Doesn't make any goddamn sense at all, actually, when you think about it. That's about all. Peace out.